Hello and welcome. My name is Andrei Sokolov. I am CG artist, generalist and developer. And today we are going to be creating Blender EV Nebula. First of all, thank you so much for subscribing and supporting me. That was really awesome. All right, let's jump right into it. I'll be using Blender 2.83. Let's start with default cube. First of all, I select the camera, then press Alt-G and Alt-R to reset its location and rotation. Then I press RX90 and click mouth button to rotate it along the x-axis 90 degrees. And press GY-10 to move it 10 units back on the y-axis. Then I select our default cube, press S10 to scale it 10 times. Get a little bit out of there, press 0 on numpad to enter the camera view. Switch it to the render view, press Z and choose rendered. So here how it looks when our camera is inside the cube. Now let's remain the cube to something like volume and split our 3D view and choose shader editor. At first let's move to the world and turn down strength to 0, because we don't need any emission from the outer world. Also, we can turn down the color all the way down to black, but it's not necessary, just in case. Nothing changes because Outer World is out of the cube. Now let's select Volume and go to the Materials tab. Switch back to the Object mode, delete default principle BSDF, because we won't need it, and press Shift A, Shader, Principled Volume, and connect it to the Volume socket, because we need it to affect the volume, not the surface. Hit N to temporarily hide that panel, press Shift A, choose Noise Texture, and then press Ctrl Shift and click on it. You need the Node Wrangler add-on to be enabled. It is included in Blender 2.83, so you can go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and start to type in Node Wrangler, and just make sure that that checkbox is checked. Alright, let's hide it, and let's move out a little bit out of that cube. So here are how it looks from the outside. Let's turn out that volume for a moment just to see it better. So here how looks the texture itself. It's some kind of clouds. We can tweak some settings, add some details, add some roughness which basically adds more small details. Then with a the mouse click select nice texture and press Ctrl T to add texture coordinates and mapping nodes. Reconnect texture coordinates from generated to object and change scale to 1. All those things are not necessary, I don't know, just a matter of habit. Let's try um, maybe another texture like Voronoi texture, plug the vector into the vector, press Ctrl Shift click, and here how it looks. You can change the scales around me, so you can just play with those textures and see what's going on here. Also, you may use this texture as texture coordinates for another textures. That's how the texture works. All we need to know now that all generated noises in Blender are three dimensional. It is not just a plain texture. They have not only width and height, they also have a depth. For our nebula, we will use Musgrave texture. We will use it for our nebula main noise. And that's how it looks. Just some black and white noise. Let's choose it to reached multifractal. Now it looks like some kind of snakes. Let's play with the settings a little bit till we get what we want. I need something cloudy, I don't need those kind of snakes, crank up details, crank down scale, maybe add dimension, a lower dimension, oh here it is, here it becomes to look like something more like energy, play with offset a little bit. So again, I don't do something special right now, I just play with the settings and look at what looks good. That looks pretty good for the start. Now, in Blender, all texture black and white colors can be transferred to digits, where black means zero and one means white. So we need this texture to be spread more evenly between zero and one, I mean between black and white. To do that, we will add a math node, shift A, converter, math node. By default, it's set to add, and we will change it to subtract and plug between Musgrave texture and viewer. Now, we subtract from all values of the texture 0.5. So every part of the texture which was black now becomes minus 0.5. All the parts which were gray, I mean 0.5, they become zero, black. All the parts which were 1 becomes 0 0.5. 
and etc. etc. Musgrave texture gives value in the range more than 0 and 1. So we subtracted 0.5 and still we see the gray color and almost done see the black color. Almost what we need. We just need to tweak some settings. Let's check the clamp checkbox. If the value is below the 0, it will stay 0. If the value is higher than 1, it will stay 1. Let's duplicate it, get a little bit closer look. To better see what's going on here, clean some room for our later work, delete unnecessary nodes, clean up a little bit, and now it seems pretty much organized. All right. Let's change this subtract mode to power and plug the subtract node into it. Now, by cranking this value up, we will see that our texture becomes more black. Why is it going on? What the power does basically multiplies the value by itself. 0 multiplied by 0 becomes 0. 1 multiplied by 1 becomes 1. But what if we have something like 0 0.5? 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5 becomes 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is lower than 0 0.5. The closer initial value to the zero, the faster it will become the black. And if it's closer to the one, it just does it slower. Let's leave clamp checkbox checked, take a bit closer look at what we've got. And let's play some more with our settings of the texture to make it more interesting. Don't be afraid to play with the settings and just see what each settings does and how they work when different values are combined together. So let's crank up power just a little bit more. Let's set it to 50 because I like simple numbers. Shift D to duplicate, plug it between power and viewer and change the mode to multiply. Now we multiply all the values between 0 and 1 by the value we choose. We don't need so much white, so let's crank up power a little bit more and maybe subtract a little bit even more to get more black and less white colors. We do that to get some value that is higher than 1, because now we will be using it for the density. 1 is not enough for density to be really dense. So now let's plug it right into the density and plug principal volume to material output. So um, nothing happens. That's because we need to plug it into the volume. And that's how it looks. Pretty blocky. Mm. Press 0 to switch to the camera view. Check that multiply is not clamped and we get value more than 1. Go to the render settings and volume metrics. Here we need to change some values. First of all, we need to change tile size to be the smallest one. The smaller the tile size, the better is quality of texture we see in the volume metrics. So now it's already much better. It's some kind of smoke already. Now we can increase samples all the way up to 256. So the more samples you set, the more accurate your texture looks like. We won't need volumetric lighting, turn it off, and we got that completely black image. Alright. And let's plug our output to emission strands. Here it is. Oh, everything is red. Like some bloody clouds. Hmm. That's pretty nice, but this is not what I was going to show you. Well, emission color. Maybe that's because of temperature. Oh, I plug it into the road socket. Emission strange, not the black body intensity. Oh, here it is. Yes. So now we've got a pure white cloud. And that is because we got value that is far higher than the one. Let's connect it right from the power output, which is clamped. Press Shift D to duplicate it. And now we control emission strength separately from the density. Try different values till I get something that looks like what I want. Now here's the trick. I press Shift A and add another noise texture and plug the vector into it. Let's disconnect our principal volume for a while, press Ctrl and with right mouse button click, I'll just cut this link out. Press Ctrl Shift and click on the noise texture and get a little bit out of the cube. Let's play with the settings, increase the scale, press Shift A, Converter, Math. Change the mode to subtract to get more even difference between black and white. We need to get to the value where black is only becoming to be the black. Shift D to duplicate, change the mode to power, crank up the value, somewhere like 2.5, all right, let it be 2. Shift D to duplicate, change the mode to multiply, check clamp boxes for both power and subtract, and crank up multiply. Press Shift A and add a color ramp to get a better control of the texture. Now let's add a little bit more of details. 
again, tweak some things till we get a result we want. The idea is to make it a little bit different from the texture we already got for density and emission values, because now we will be adding a color. So we go to the color ramp and add some more color controllers. And here we will change the color to something like that bluish color for the beginning and that one to the red color. All right, like that. Maybe a little bit more red or or orange or well, let it be red. This one to blue. Let's add another one control. Just play with the settings till you get some color you want to. Maybe change the mode to be spline to make it a little bit more smooth. All right, it's look pretty good. Maybe it's another slider and another color, sounds like green or purple or something else you want. Crank up a little bit of value or no, it's maybe a little bit blue, green, yellow, orange. It all looks not very good. Well, let's delete it and just crank up a little bit brightness of all the colors. Blue, red, well, it's pretty good for now. Let's plug it into the emission color and see how it looks like with a shader. So now it's look completely white and uh, this is because, uh, oh yes, uh, this is because we've got a viewer plugged in. Here it is. Now it looks like a reddish and bluish dark clouds. Make a little bit clean up. Well, we have not enough space there, so let's rearrange our windows, collapse our 3D view to the shader editor, pull the timeline a little bit up and change it to the shader editor to get it below our 3D view. All right, now it looks pretty comfortable. Reorganize our nodes to keep things clear. Let's choose those one and press Ctrl J to add a frame. It does nothing, we need it just to remind ourselves what this texture does. Select it and in the item label tab type what this part does. This is the main density texture, so let's name it main texture. Now we know that there is our main texture. Don't forget to save your project. I used to save each project in a different folder to keep things organized. Now let's select the node which is connected to the emission strength, crank up this value a little bit to make our clouds more bright. Yes, here it is. Here it starts to look good. Continue tweaking settings here and there. Maybe add some dark values between them just to split it. Orbit around it to see how it looks. Well, it already looks pretty good. Here we can play with the subtract to add more empty space between the dense part of the volume. Now here what else we can do. Press shift and hold in the right button join the slings. Move the power a little bit to the side. Shift D to duplicate it and change the mode to less than. Well, to greater than. Yes. And set threshold to the zero. You can turn off the clamp, it doesn't matter because greater than gives you exact zero value of everything that is below the threshold and one to all values which are higher than the threshold. By adding this threshold, we will add some more empty space. The main idea of the math greater than node is to get more sharp edges of the texture. So we've got only black and white values. And the white values are evenly multiplied by the multiply node. So this allows to achieve these hard edges. We don't see hard edges just because the texture is very detailed. But if we get a little bit closer look, we will see that the edges actually are pretty sharp. So, for example, if we will see at the power node, we will see the difference much better. Mm, by the way, let's delete power node because we don't need it as we already use greater than node. Let's play a little bit more with details, maybe we have too much details. Tweak some other parameters to get something more interesting, maybe something like this, why not? Let's see how it looks in the volume. Well, mm, that looks pretty good. Almost just like all this space nebulous. I'm pretty happy with that result for now. Let's duplicate noise texture, add vector into it, add greater than node, and now we will be adding another texture for the volume. Ctrl Shift right click to cut off volume link to see only the texture we are playing with. Set the threshold all the way down to zero, crank up a little bit. Okay. So that's how that texture will look like. Now we duplicate the greater than node, set the mode to add and plug the greater than node to the add node. So now we have two textures, white colors added together. Let's plug principled volume back. And that is how it looks like. Well, now it looks like maybe a little bit too solid. So let's lower the greater than threshold. 
till we get something more cloudy. And let's add a power node to get a little bit more of control over the second texture. Crank it up to add more black, which means more empty space, and maybe play with the scale a little bit. Now this texture has uh, the same settings as the texture below, so we need to change something. For example, the scale, or we can even change the mode to 4D and change that W value, which means something like evolution of the noise during the time. So here, how it looks when we are just playing with it. Let's decrease the scale because we need some even clouds all like that. Hmm, it looks pretty nice. So maybe increase the brightness a little bit and play a little bit more with the colors. Here we add something like they are glowing from the inside. Maybe make it not green, but something like yellow. Fly a bit around to see how it looks from the different sizes. So what can we do more? We can just play with the shape of the added big clouds, maybe add a little bit less of the details. Zero on the number to enter the camera mode. Shift tilde to fly around and see how it looks. Add a little bit of roughness to get more details. Well, it's starting to look pretty nice. Let's add some more brightness. Though no, it actually starts to affect a color ramp node. Let's play better with the colors themselves. Get more dark values to separate different parts from each other. Add some more crazy colors, something like that maybe. Or maybe not. Do we need green here? Maybe a little bit more orange or red. Now we're just playing with the colors, still get something that looks good. Maybe we should change the scale of the color and texture. Again, fly around to see what we've got. Pretty nice, though it might be a little bit dark here. Anyway, let's make a test render to see how it looks like on the render. So, here it is. 11 seconds. Well, it looks pretty nice. This black edge is just a cube edge, nothing special. Well, in general, it looks alright. Maybe we should find just a more pleasant point of view. Let's leave it like here for now. By the way, one more trick. As we use density with zero values, we actually don't need to copy emission strains from that texture. We can add emission right here, and it will affect only those parts of the texture which have some density, because if they don't have the density, they cannot be affected by emission. That's just an emptiness. Vacuum. Space. Cold and deadly. Like those red clouds. Let's crank up the brightness a little bit, to make them not so scary. Alright. And now let's see how the density value affects the brightness. So, the lower the density, the higher is the brightness of the emission, because it can't get through the density. This is pretty logical, isn't it? Duplicate this texture, Shift D, plugin vector, change the time value, just to be different from another textures, change the scale to 0.5, duplicate some math node, change the mode to divide, type in something like 10 for beginning, plug the factor into the value, Duplicate Add Texture Shift D, connect this node to this node, wait to see the result, and uh, oh, well, the result is completely white. Well, white, pinkish, and bluish. Oh, that looks like uh, just a solid cube, and that's definitely not what we want. Let's try to clamp it, maybe crank a little bit more. The idea is to add some semi transparent clouds to those sharp clouds. Maybe we should divide it even more. Hmm, that's pretty strange. Maybe something wrong with or some values. Maybe we should clamp it? Hmm, no. Let's Ctrl Shift click on the add node to see what it looks like. It seems like it looks okay. So what is your idea? Why is it going on? I actually know the answer, and I have already told you that before. As we got just a little bit density, no matter how much, it's not a zero. It means that emission strains affect that. In that case, if we want to use some semi-transparent textures, which are different from pure black and pure white textures, we need to duplicate texture into the emission strains, like we did in the very beginning. Now this starts to look pretty good. Though actually if we zoom in, we see that the other texture was really semi-transparent. So now see, if we divide it only by 100, it becomes more dense. If we divide by a higher value, it becomes less dense and more transparent. So we just need to find a value we want. Really, really semi-transparent. And here we can make it a little bit more, like, cloudy, add some more texture feel to it. Let's zoom in and see how it looks like from the inside. Zero on numpad to move to the camera view, and let's render it out to see how it looks like. More textures we got, more time it takes to render.
So the last time it was about 12 seconds, now it is already 15 seconds per frame. I got just one NVIDIA 2080 Ti, pretty strong but not a limit for wheels. By the way, as we use manual emission, the volume lighting and volume shadows almost don't affect anything, and this actually helps to render faster. So if I can render something faster with faking something, I will always do that if I can. So let's maybe add some more contrast to the color, maybe some dark values or something more saturated to get something more impressive. But you may use any colors you want and you like, of course. It's just a matter of an artistic taste or something like that. Just continue playing with colors here and there. Here's how our setup looks like. Organize our nodes, take an orbit rotation around, looking for some good view to render out. What is great about procedural textures? You always can find some point of view which will be cool. And it is always random. So anytime you are playing with the settings, you get the different result. And that is really awesome. Let's render it one more time. Now it looks like some kind of clouds. Great. But I would like to make it more even. So I think I'll refuse this semi-transparent texture and leave only these big clouds, which were the second texture. Yes. It looks more like nebula. So I think I'll take this as a base for our render. And now maybe I should add a little bit more semi-transparent texture to it. Yeah, this looks good, but it's a bit way too much. So let's crank it up to 1000, maybe even more, something like 10,000, 5000, 3000. Yeah, that starts to look okay. Wow, I like these blue clouds. Maybe I can get even something more out of there. Let's get those sliders a bit closer to get those. Oh yeah, those energy look. Looks very good. Let's render it out and see how it looks like on the render. Wow, a little bit smooth, but in general it looks great. What can we do else? We can add some HDRI to our nebula. So I select background and press Ctrl T. Then press open and look for my folders with HDRIs. I don't have much of them and I'll be using the one I made myself for the previous Nebula project. This is a 16K HDRI, let's crank up a value to see how it looks like. Well, for this Nebula it looks a little bit bright, so we need some color correction. Let's find a color, mix, and set it to color. Now we plug our texture in the lower socket and in the upper socket. And for the upper socket, we add math and set it to the power. Now we can control the brightness and the color to it by the mix color node. I prefer this way instead of default brightness contrast node, because it gives more control overall. And I can add another hue saturation value and raise saturation to something like 2. Well, for that nebula, it looks pretty good. Now we need to animate the camera. So we change this window to the timeline. Look for the good point of view. And I like this big cloud, so I think we will be flying around it. Now I press I and choose location and rotation. Then move something like 60 frames forward. And let's change the frame end to 60 also to render only this frame range. Change the frame rate to 30, for example. Fly around a little bit more here and there, up and down. And again, press I and choose location and rotation. And here's the animation and nothing happens because we animated location and rotation for the volume and it haven't changed. And now we need to do the same for the camera. Well, <laughs> so now we select the camera, press I, choose location and rotation. So here we will be ending. Press shift left arrow to jump right into the beginning of our timeline. Shift tilde to move around. All right, it looks pretty good. I location rotation and woo, here it is. Press T and set interpolation mode to liner. And I know space, there's no sound, but here we play, yeah. It looks very smooth. And it gives them an idea of how it will look like on the render animation. So now we split this window change it to the shader editor. I want to make some more adjustments. Save the project, change it to the object, select our volume, and I want to add maybe some more semi-transparent textures like this was before. So we will be using that add node, 
hide this for a moment, Shift D to duplicate this. We will use it to lower transparency of this very first texture we were working at. Well, maybe 3000 is too much, maybe 2000, maybe even less, 1000, till we start to see something. 100, oh yes, we start to see something, just one. Well, maybe it looks pretty good with even one. Let's save the project and try to render the frame. Well, 14 seconds, not bad. And it looks good, I like it. Though I would like to make some more adjustments. Actually, maybe I don't need so much transparent texture, so let's take a look how it looks without it. Play animation here and there, maybe rotate the camera a little bit more to get more pleasant point of view. Maybe a bit closer to these energy clouds. Well, let's leave it like here, I, location rotation. Shift left arrow to a jump into the beginning, change the starting point, closer to this cloud, we will be orbiting around it. Maybe even more close to it. Oh, again, I've added keyframe to volume, <laughs> and now I need to do this for the camera one more time. So do all the same, but now we added keyframe to the camera. All right, I think this looks pretty good. Now, I think we will lower frame rate to 25 frames per second and make it a little bit slower. So I press double A to deselect all keyframes, select this keyframe, press G and X and move it all the way up to the end of the frame range. Press spacebar to see the animation. Yes, it looks much better now, though it's still not real time, so it will be faster. Let's make some more adjustments to make it look even more energy. We need it to be a bit more wide. How can we do it? Maybe change the color or we can change the value already. I want to make it more sharp, so how can I do it? Just multiplying the brightness? Well, it won't work because color ramp clamps all the values higher than 1 and lower than 0. So, how can I do it? Actually, pretty much the same as I've already done with the world settings. Let's get some more room, add a color, mix node, color, factor all the way up to 1, colors to color 2, and uh, the same to color 1. Let's plug it to the emission color, shift A, converter, math node, change it to multiply, raise it to 3, and plug in between. So now it should be brighter. Yes, it becomes much brighter. So we can try to make it even more sharp. Add another control. Well, well, not here. Here, add another control. Tweak some settings with those red colors to get them more depth. And again, tweaking some settings till we get something right or completely wrong, or we just completely ruin what we've already done, like this, and trying to improve it back, or maybe not. Bring it back. Well, I think in general it already looks pretty good. Yes, and then in the end we see that yellowish cloud. Let's see how it looks in animation. And again, well, at this moment I think we should start to stop ourselves. But before I render animation, I want to add some stars flying around in inside the nebula. So, let's enter the solid mode, press Z and choose the solid mode. Move out from the cube, shift A, mesh, plane. We added a plane. I press R, X, 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis and then Ctrl A, choose rotation to apply rotation. Now I move to the constraint tab and add object constraint track 2. As the target I choose the camera, add another collection, call it particle and move the plane into that collection. Choose the plane, add a material to it, call it something like star. Choose the volume object. Now I will use the volume object as a particle emitter. So I go to the particles tab, add a new particle system. Change frame start and end values to zero. I need it to emit on the zero frame and stay alive all the scene length. Then I go to the fields, turn off gravity and all other fields, but still something affects it. Oh, this is velocity, so I turn off velocity as well. And in the mission tab, change source from faces to volume. Press 0 on numpad to jump into the camera view. So press use modifiers tag, random order, and see what it looks like in the motion. Well, alright, it looks good. So now let's choose plane and place it right in front of the camera. 
select camera and press Ctrl P to parent the plane to the camera. And now, oh, well, I've made the opposite. I've parent the camera to the object. So select them in the different order. So first I select the plane, then I select the camera. And yes, now it's right. I press Ctrl P. And yes, I haven't unparented it for some reason. So one more time, I select the camera, press Alt P, clear parent. No matter. Well, I just position it right in front of the camera, change transform orientations to the local and move it away on the Y axis, just to see what will go on. Now, the plane is moving with the camera and no matter where is the camera or how it is rotated, the plane will be always in front of the camera. And that is exactly what we need. I think we should make our animation even more slow, so I change the end frame range to 300, choose camera and move its final keyframe up to the end of the frame range. Now select the plane, go to the materials tab, delete default principle VSDF, press shift A, shader and add emission shader, again shift A and transparent shader, shift A, mix shader. Where is it? Mix shader. So we will be mixing emission with transparent. And let's plug the mix shader into the material output. Switch back to the render view. And now we need to add a mask texture. So the mix shader just changes the value between emission and transparent. So now it is not transparent because we have to set it also in settings here. Blend mode, alpha blend. Now it works. We add shift A, input texture coordinates, again, Shift A, Converter, Vector Math, and change it to Length, and plug object into it. Ctrl Shift click on it, Shift A, Convert, Mass, change it to Less Than, and so now we have Circle, which we will be using for our mask. Let's swap Transparent and Emission, because all what is black will affect top input, and all what is white will affect white input. Plug it into the mix shader and mix shader to the material output. Here how it looks like. We can add some more emission strings if we want it to be affected by bloom or glare or anything like this. Now changing the less than threshold, we will change the radius of that circle. It is actually a sphere, but as it is projected on the plane, it looks like a circle. Actually, I don't like to use bloom or glare. I like to see everything what I do in the viewport and get the full control over it. So I add the mass node, change the mode to add, and I add direct length to that value. And set emission back to 1 to see what happens. Well, now it looks not like I want to. Let's try subtract. No, this is not it. Maybe change less than to greater than and swap the shaders. No, again, it's not what I look, so let's Ctrl Shift click on the add node to see what is going on here. Well, it is not what I want, so let's change it back to the less than. Ctrl Shift click to make sure that we are looking at what we are working with. We can simply invert it, but invert clamp and color, so we will do the advanced invert. We add converter, math, change it to subtract, subtract 1, and then multiply it by minus 1. So now the input is inverted but not clamped, so it can work with values more than 1 and less than 0. Select this, press Ctrl J and name it Invert. So now it does pretty much the same as Invert but without clamping. Alright, let's scale it down. It's not scaling. I'll move it by my hand. Move it a bit to the side. Now convert our math and change it to Power. And again with exponential number we will control the sharpness of the texture. So now it looks like a shining glow, but we have a control over it and we see it right in the viewport. So let's plug it back into the material output, swap shaders. Yes, now it looks exactly like what I want. We disable this collection because we don't need to see it in the viewport, but we want to see the particles with that object instead. So we choose our volume as it is our emitter and we need to change those halos to something like object and then choose our plane. Here it is. And we press object rotation. And now every particle is rotated exactly like the particle inside the disabled collection. And as we know, it is following camera. So all the particles will be following camera rotation and always look towards it. So let's crank up scale of the particles to see them better. 
I think there are not enough particles, so we could increase their amount with emission, but we will add the children instead. So I press simple, change the render amount to 10, crank up randomize size all the way up to 1, add roundness all the way up to 1, and add radius all the way up to something like 1.5 or even more. Well, now it's starting to look really good. Let's play animation. Whoa, that's great, except this star right in front of the camera. I want to improve it without changing the particle system. So I enable back my particle collection, select the particle, get into the shader editor, get some room, press Shift A, input, and I need a... where is it? Camera, camera, object particle, UV map. No, cam oh, here it is, camera data. I will need the depth. But first of all, I want to look what the exact depth of the camera field of view. Here it is, clip end is 100. So that means that the value we get from the camera data view the depth node is in range 0, 100. And we need to divide it by 100 to get it in range from 0 to 1. We press Shift A, Converter, Math, Black view the depth into it, choose divide, and divide it by 100. Select it and press Ctrl Shift click. And now you see that all the particles are in the range between 0, which is black, and 1, which is white. They are all like grayish color. And the closer they are to the camera, the more dark they are. So that will help us to mask out the particles which are too close to the camera. We add Shift A color ramp to get some control over which particles will be masked and tweak settings a little bit. Something like this, I think. So now we need to add this mask to our material. But how can we do it? Actually, all values that are black means zero. So any value multiplied by zero will become zero. And all we need to do is to add one more multiply node here and multiply our result value by our mask. Connect this to this. And now let's plug this material back. And as you can see, the particle which was in the front of the camera disappeared. So that is exactly what we wanted. Let's disable the collection with the main object. And now we see only particles. Let's get into the particle tab and crank up the value up to 50 to get more stars. Maybe decrease size a little bit because they're too big. Okay, let's look. I think it is almost okay. Let's probake it, even if they are not affected by any force fields. Sometimes they are doing strange things, so I prefer to bake them just in case, even if they don't do anything. All right, let's save our project. Press space to see the animation one more time. I think it's almost pretty good, but I would like to make some more adjustments just before the render. Actually, I would like to randomize emission strains for each particle. So I press Shift A, choose Input, Object Info, and here is a random parameter which we will be using. Control Shift click on it. Actually, it has a lot of interesting things, but we need random for now. And now you see that every particle has its own grade of gray. Shift A converter. The idea is to randomize it in the range between 0 and something like 3. We change the mode to multiply and plug it into the strains. Now when we shift click on it, we see that all the stars have the random emission strands, which is exactly what we wanted. Let's get a little bit closer look. Well, it looks good, except it doesn't. <laughs> so now the shining glow is a little bit way too much and we need to decrease it. But it is quite simple to do if we remember where is it in our shader setup. Usually I add a lot of frame nodes to organize things, but now I think it must be somewhere here. So we need to divide this value, which represents our star glow, with something like two, maybe three. As we multiply it by three, yes, we should divide it by three. And now I think the star glow is a bit... Maybe it should be multiplied by the same value. Does it work this way? Oh, obviously no. If we clamp it... No, that's not what we want. Maybe crank up power to get more sharp view. Or even more. 7? 11? Well, it looks better, but still 
it is way too obvious for me. I would like to make it more subtle. So let's cut it out and manually crank up that value to something like 5 or maybe 10 and crank up power to make it more sharp. Yes, it's starting to look better. Maybe we should make the core of the stars a little bit smaller by tweaking this value in less than, add some more glow lowering the power. How it looks like from the far? Yes, I think now it looks pretty good. Get some more room, select the volume, and yes, but no. I would like to add some brightness to it. And as I add some brightness, brightness we add into overall texture, so we need to divide the brightness of the glow. And now from the far it looks much better. Let's try to render out an animation and see what it looks like. Well, as for me, it looks pretty good. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope it was useful. If you like it, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to this channel, write your comments. My name is Andrei Sokolov, and I hope to see you in the next videos. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.